Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In today's video, we're going to be helping you find the right class to main. Going through all 13 classes in World of Warcraft and rating them in PvE as well as PvP. Telling you the biggest strengths to playing them overall and ranking their class talent tree design overall as well. Hopefully by doing so, we can steer you in the right direction to selecting a class that truly speaks to you. Quick disclaimer is that the classes are constantly evolving and is based on data from Shadowlands as well as the overall design in Dragonflight pre-patch heading into the new expansion. Starting things off with the Paladin. The Paladin is one of the very few classes in the game with all three role types. The Holy Protector of the Light brings massive amounts of utility for the party and raid with tons of buffs, blessings, and auras to help change the tides of battle. You are always going to want to typically bring one to two Paladins in your raid for that reason. And the best part is, they can fit almost anywhere with how versatile they are. They can deal great damage with Rhett, good chunky AoE heals with Holy, or a great tank with protection. In a raid environment, they are always needed because some of the mandatory buffs that they bring and incredible defensive cooldowns for the raid to keep everyone alive and pumping. It's truly amazing how versatile the class overall can be, and if it's left in the hands of a skilled player, they could potentially play all three roles in a guild if they have the gear for it. The talent tree design at the moment heading into Dragonflight isn't the best out of the bunch, but Blizzard is still finding ways to tune it up and complete it to make some of the weaknesses in the past not so apparent, like Rhett's AoE DPS issues. Their performance overall in Shadowlands wasn't bad in the arena, but it wasn't necessarily good either. They dominated the early seasons of PvP with how strong Retribution and Holy Paladin were, and they could fit in nearly every single comp and just took over games completely on their own. In Mythic Plus, they were average across the board, with the lack of mobility in a timed instance being an issue, as well as Retribution not bringing too much solid AoE DPS in a high cleave scenario. They made up for it heavily with their powerful group utility and insane off-healing potential, but they certainly were never the stars of the show. You have to know when you're playing the Paladin class, you are playing a hybrid spec with a massive utility, so helping others during combat in raids and PvP is definitely going to be one of your main focuses. It's definitely a change of gameplay pace compared to other plate wearers like Death Knight or Warrior for example, but overall they could be a, considered a fantastic main choice by how great they fit in team composition. These are definitely telltale signs of a class that you can main this upcoming expansion, and here's a first look at the Paladin's raid tier set in Dragonflight, as well as some of their tier set bonuses. Next up is the Druid. The Druid is known as being the most versatile class in the entire game. The Druid is the only class in the game with four different specializations and one of very few classes that can play all three role types. They are truly a jack of all trades and a great class overall for people who like to mix things up occasionally. The Druid is mandatory to have in a raiding environment due to easily having one of the most powerful major cooldown toolkits in the entire game, including the ability to battle resurrect a fallen teammate during combat and the option to give massive AoE healing with Tranquility and Convoke the Spirits. The Druid's performance throughout most of Shadowlands was really good, Balanced Druids and Restoration Shamans being pretty much S tier throughout the entirety of the expansion for raiding, and Guardian Druids being still an amazing tank option with how much damage mitigation they have almost permanently with Iron Fur and their massive health pools. Heading into Dragonflight, their class specific talent tree is looking really good. They are really pushing the fact that Druid is a very versatile spec and giving you the option to be very proficient at different gameplay styles no matter what spec you're maining currently. In PvP, they can perform mostly well too, with the addition to some Covenant abilities that help them dominate most of the early seasons, and I know you all remember getting one-shotted by Convoke the Spirits multiple times in Shadowlands, but in Mythic Plus, things are a bit tough for them overall now though. Barrel and Balance now being on the low end for AoE DPS, and Guardian being the lowest single target DPS in the game, they do struggle. But I mean, no class could be amazing at every bit of content, right? Overall, Druid is an amazing class that is great to have in your party with the amazing versatility and very powerful cooldowns for your group or raid. If you're looking for a class that can truly do it all, Druid can easily be your main. Here's a first look at the Druid's raid tier set in Dragonflight, as well as some of their tier set bonuses. Next up, we have the Priest. The Priest is known as being a very powerful support class, being the only class in the game with two different healing specs, with having Discipline being focused on absorbs and damage mitigation, and wholly all about reactive burst healing. In the raid environment, all three specs of Priest perform well and can fit almost in any grade group out there. But typically, Holy Priest is going to outshine the rest with how insane their healing is overall, and their ability to damage is a plus as well. On top of it all, they can use Power Infusion on a DPS to significantly increase their damage for a short period of time. 
Shadow Priest is changing quite significantly overall in the Dragonflight pre-patch. With having the choice between two major core cooldowns like Void Eruption and Dark Ascension and other iconic spells overall. The spec has lots of options and playstyle can vary widely depending on the talent selected, but it's currently very difficult to tell how they will perform overall moving forward. Obviously, it goes without saying that priests are always going to be in the meta somehow, some way, with either Discipline or Holy being a fantastic choice in the arena for most groups. And even sometimes Shadow Priests being incredibly strong with their high spread pressure and strong defensives to get themselves out of sticky situations. When it comes to Mythic Plus, you guessed it, Holy Priests were mostly on top of the ladder by how powerful they are in all aspects for Mythic Plus. Good damage, great group buffing, and utility, and more. Shadow Priests and Discipline Priests were usually middle of the pack or less, but... That doesn't mean things can't change with the new talent trees and build designs heading into the expansion. The Priest is an amazing caster to play in Dragonflight if you're looking for a caster with great utility and incredible healing flexibility. Don't forget, if you ever want to dabble on the dark side, you can do that as well. Here's a first look at the Priest raid tier sets in Dragonflight as well as some of their tier set bonuses. Next up, we have the Hunter. The Hunter overall is a very powerful DPS class in World of Warcraft. What makes the Hunter so great is that it is very easy to pick up and learn, and also even excel at, with three separate gameplay styles that change dramatically. You can have loads of fun for a while with any of these three specs. A spec focused more on melee combat, a spec focused in having a ton of beasts attack your foes, or even just being a solo marksman destroying your foes from a super far range. When it comes to raiding, Hunters are amazing at focusing on important mechanics because they can deal nearly all their damage while being on the move. On top of that, there is also usually one Hunter spec that is near the top of the meters in overall DPS almost consistently. So if needed, you can always play a spec that deals insane damage for your raid. Usually each spec has its own specific niche and combat style that it specifically excels at. So if you need to swap while you're progressing on a boss, you totally can. The Hunter talent tree at the very moment isn't the best ever, but Blizzard is making it a point to make a ton of changes to it overall, and they focus on this talent tree more than any other class out there. So it shouldn't be too much of a worry. In a competitive arena setting, there is usually one Hunter spec that feels stronger than the others. In the beginning of Shadowlands, it was Marksman, in the middle is Beast Mastery, and near the end, it's now Survival. It's usually the same thing when it comes to a Mythic Plus as well. Don't let this discourage you from picking a Hunter though. This just means that you have the opportunity to play an entire class overall, and always at some point be very viable in all forms of content. Don't forget about the crazy utility that this class brings for AoE like Binding Shot, Tar Trap, and Hunter also being one of the very few classes to bring a Bloodlust effect to the party to increase everyone's damage and healing by a massive amount. The Hunter is a powerful DPS class overall in World of Warcraft, and heading into Dragonflight, they look like a blast. Here's a first look at the Hunter Raid tier set in Dragonflight, as well as some of their tier set bonuses. Next up, we have the Rogue. Another incredible DPS class overall is the Rogue. The Rogue is always such an iconic class for being that thief in a fantasy-like world. There's almost nothing cooler. Throughout the expansion and raiding, the Rogue is a very strong DPS class. All the classes have incredible DPS styles and variety, and you really have unlimited options to choose from for almost every boss fight and encounter. A spec that specializes in cleave and AoE with Outlaw, a damage over time and execute specialist with assassination, and a massive burst window specialization with Subtlety Rogue. When it comes to their talent trees, the Rogue is in an incredible spot at the moment, with all three specs able to get iconic abilities like Shadow Dance, Thistle Tea, Cold Blood, and Echoing Reprimand. It really seems like Rogue can have some insane theory crafting potential this upcoming expansion. Everyone knows how strong Rogues are in PvP. Rogue has close to the highest skill ceiling in the game, and if played properly, can beat almost anybody in the right circumstance. I think with the new Solo Shuffle feature coming out, Rogue can have the opportunity to have a ton of fun in queuing up solo. They are proficient in solo capping points, as well as defending the flag room and capture the flag battlegrounds as well. When it comes to Mythic Plus, all specs can perform well, but one typically stands out over the rest, and that's Outlaw Rogue. It has always been incredible in Mythic Plus for just how much AoE cleave damage they deal consistently. Just like the other Rogue specs, Outlaw provides high survivability, self-sustain, and an immunity, making it a great pickup for any group. The Rogue is overall an amazing DPS class of World of Warcraft, and there is a spec for nearly every style of play. Poisons and Bleeds, Execute Damage, Burst Damage Windows, Heavy Cleave, you name it, the Rogue has it. Here's a first look at the Rogue Raid tier set and Dragonflight, as well as some of their tier set bonuses. Next up, we have the Mage. The Mage in every expansion is a solid class overall, no matter what, 
there is always one spec that is going to be viable in PvE and one spec viable in PvP. As of late, Fire Mage has been really shining through more than the other two specs though. Fire Mage offers an excellent one minute cooldown burst window for incredible bursts on AoE and single target. Fire's strengths include that they are fully mobile, they have strong execution damage, and they still have the best defensive toolkit in the game. If you're a mage and capable of playing all the specs at a progression level, then you are in a very strong place for the raid you're progressing. They also bring portals for your team, food for recovery, and one of the few classes to bring a bloodlust effect with time warp, making them mandatory to have in your raid. Early on in the Dragonflight beta, the mage talent trees were honestly just a mess, but coming closer to launch, they're getting better by the day and finally starting to shape up into something decent with some variety of choice. But overall, it still seems like you're going to pick the same choices rather than having the freedom of choice. In PvP, you typically only have two options max for real competitive PvP, and that's going to be Fire or Frost. Fire is always incredible because of the amount of off-CC and instant on-demand burst the spec has, and Frost sometimes can have its uses because it is the class with the highest amount of control in the entire game. In Mythic Plus, Mage is always phenomenal to have in your party with the utility and massive control that they can bring fighting countless enemies. If you're looking to deal raw damage, then Fire Mage is going to be your best bet, but the other two specs bring great benefits to the group as well. Overall, the Mage is a super safe caster DPS class, with all three specs being great in some time period throughout the expansion, making them super versatile and fun with different engaging rotations. Here's a first look at Mage raid tier sets in Dragonflight as well as some of their tier set bonuses. Next up, we have the Warlock. The Warlock is a very underrepresented and underappreciated class, but don't let that fool you. The Warlock is a pure DPS class and is amazing to have with you. The Master of Darkness brings health stones, soul stones, as well as gateways to help dodge tons of mechanics overall in the raid. All these are absolutely game-changing for your raid and increasing survivability overall, making at least one Warlock mandatory. All three Warlock DPS specs are amazing in at least one form of content, and they also have the huge benefit of having a pet to help them in combat. The DPS specs are incredibly flexible overall too, to be able to get involved in any fight mechanics needed, like heavy cleave, execute phases, high mobility, you name it, they can bring it. Affliction brings insane amount of dots with mobility, Destruction brings health crushing cleave with chaos bolts and infernals, and Demonology brings a swarm of demonic creatures to fight by your side. Warlock Talent Tree is designed and easily one of the best and is very well thought out. There are tons of theory crafting options in the game right now that can truly fit a wide variety of specs and playstyles heading into Dragonflight. When it comes to competitive PvP, you have to know that the Warlock is an incredibly high skill cap class. But, if you start to master it, you will definitely start feeling the power flow through your veins. You'd need to play with a specific team composition to really shine, but all three specs have the potential to be incredibly strong throughout the duration of the expansion. When it comes to Mythic Plus, typically Warlock take a bit to ramp up due to the lack of stats early on in the expansion, but by the end, they almost always become powerhouses. The Warlock is a very scary range caster class in World of Warcraft. With three super fun DPS specs, it's no doubt they could be anyone's main. Here's a first look at Warlock's raid tier set in Dragonflight, as well as some of their tier set bonuses. Next up, we have the Warrior. The Colossal Melee Dominating Warrior is a fantastic class to play in World of Warcraft. They have the ability to DPS or tank, and in the raid, the Warrior brings tons of great things to the table, like Battleshot for Melee DPS to increase damage in the entire raid, and Rally and Cry for a temporary health increase to raid members to help increase survivability on certain fight mechanics. Fury and Arms DPS in a raid are usually very solid and always wanted. They always bring fun, engaging gameplay styles that is very fluid, and they have incredible mobility with all their leaps and charges to avoid scary and dangerous mechanics throughout the encounter. The problem with Warriors is that when you start stacking them in a raid, they start losing their value very quickly because of how few utility options all the specs bring. The Warrior Talent Tree has a very wide variety of options near the bottom of the tree, from many different types of situations, whether it be raiding, PvP, or just overall DPS and control. It's very obvious that Warriors have always performed well in arenas with a healer, and throughout time, they will always be in the meta in some way by how strong they are in 2v2 and 3v3s most of the time. Go into the arena with the Holy Paladin and Resto Druid, and you can easily climb the ladder. When it comes to Mythic Plus, Fury Warriors provide great sustained damage both during and outside of the cooldown windows. With great single target DPS and AoE cleave, Fury is looking great this expansion. 
Arms and protection are typically middle of the pack, otherwise in Mythic Plus due to various reasons, leaving Warrior overall slightly above average due to Fury Warriors being great in performance. The Warrior overall is a fast-paced juggernaut that is very fun to play. If you can squeeze into a guild spot as one of the only Warriors, you will be highly sought after and valuable. If you want a ruthless melee class, Warrior can very well be your main this upcoming expansion. Here's a first look at Warrior Raid tier sets in Dragonflight as well as some of their tier set bonuses. Next up, we have the Shaman. Ah, the Shaman. This class is incredibly exciting overall in the next upcoming expansion, Dragonflight. This class has the opportunity to be two types of roles, whether it be DPS or a healer. When it comes to the master of all the elements, raiding as a Shaman, you have to know your value. You bring the best utility and buffing in the entire game. You are always going to be needed in a raid no matter what spec you are, and you can spec into almost any gameplay style no matter what spec you are in. Need more cleave damage? Easy. Need more burst? Not a problem. Need more sustain long duration damage? Right away. The Shaman class overall is great to have in a raid, and they can very well have the number one talent tree design right now. On top of it all, all three specs are very different in gameplay, so you'll have an incredible time learning every spec styles if needed. When it comes to Mythic Plus, Restoration Shaman is the best spec at coming back from a critical situation. They heal very high consistent damage as long as the targets are close to each other with their AoE healing. Enhancement and Elemental Shaman perform well too with the amount of powerful AoE and cleave abilities they have in their arsenal. Bringing Bloodlust helps your group significantly in Mythic Plus as well, and in the arena, Shamans all around perform rather well in any spec. They are quite comp specific though, so that is something that will matter and you need to consider. The DPS specs bring incredible burst damage with endless utility with all their totems and purges, so they can always perform very well. When it comes to Shaman, they can easily be one of the most underappreciated classes, but they make up for it by being the biggest supporter class of them all that brings incredible burst and a wide gameplay variety as well. Here's a first look at the Shaman Raid tier set in Dragonflight, as well as some of their tier set bonuses. Next up, we have the Death Knight, the Undead Harbinger of Doom. The Death Knight has the opportunity to be a DPS or tank spec. They also have access to a pet, which is fantastic for PvE and other things. And they are one of very few classes that can battle resurrect allies as well. In a raiding environment, Death Knight brings plenty of things like anti-magic zone, which significantly increases the survivability of your raid. And overall, they are one of the strongest tanks in the entire game with how tough they are defensively, particularly when it comes to magic damage compared to other tanks. For DPS, Unholy Death Knight can benefit an incredible amount by activating your pets before a Bloodlust cooldown so they can get the buff and boost their damage significantly, and Frost Death Knight is amazing for multi-cleave for super high overall damage. Overall in Mythic Plus, Death Knight performs very well. Frost Death Knight is one of the top DPS when it comes to cleave damage, so destroying multiple groups of enemies has never been a problem for them. Blood Death Knight is the number one tank overall in Mythic Plus, and they have the highest self-sustain in the game. They have crazy good survivability combined with damage output as well. The Death Knight is an amazing class if you're looking for a strong melee fighter that is great for tanking and DPS overall. Here's a first look at Death Knight's raid tier sets in Dragonflight as well as some of their tier set bonuses. Next up, we have the Monk. The Monk overall in WoW is a fantastic choice for a main despite being one of the least played classes in the game. They are also one of the only classes in the game that can be all three role types, and they also provide unique buffs with their auras as well. Brewmaster could very easily be the most forgiving tank playstyle in the entire game, with guaranteed smooth damage intake from their passives, stagger, and shuffle. On top of having fantastic defensive cooldowns and very high mobility to dodge raid mechanics. The mobility gets even higher with Windwalker, and they have nearly unparalleled AoE and cleave damage output potential. With Mistweaver though, their healing output is exceptionally high, which combined with their strong damage output, excellent mobility, and decent durability makes them possibly the most valuable healer to bring to a raid. The talent tree for Monk overall is in a decent place. They are trying to help you overall as a Monk by getting you access to other class specialization abilities to make you more versatile in your party overall, but it might just be one of those illusions rather than the actual option of choice. In Mythic Plus, the Monk is honestly just amazing. With Windwalker being in discussion for the number one AoE cleave class in the game with the highest mobility and great utility. Brewmaster having fantastic mobility, incredible defensives, and very strong crowd control abilities to keep enemies under duress, and Mistweaver being just as mobile as the other two specs while dealing fantastic damage to help heal the party. In Arena, most of the time the only competitive spec will be Windwalker. But don't you worry, Windwalker is insane. 
all throughout Shadowlands, and even now, they are destroying enemies very quickly through defensives being active. They're very mobile, they deal high burst damage, and have a great toolkit for almost any matchup. What more could you ask for? Overall, the Monk is a super mobile, fast-paced karate master that is super fun and engaging to play, with three different role type specs that offer a ton of versatility. What more could you ask for in a main? Here's a first look at the Monk raid tier sets in Dragonflight, as well as some of their tier set bonuses. Next up, we have the Demon Hunter. This class was introduced in Legion a few years ago, and it packs a punch, being one of the only classes in the game that has only two specs, but it could be tank or DPS role. In a raiding environment, you always want at least one Demon Hunter for the Chaos Brand debuff that adds 5% magic damage to your raid. On top of that, the DPS spec is very easy to play and can switch targets without almost any downsides and can even pull your resources for instant burst. On top of being one of the most mobile specs in the entire game, Havoc also supplies powerful cooldown options for high damage required moments, especially in the AoE. When it comes to their tank spec, they have a strong all-around toolkit that combines top tier damage mitigation with strong self-healing. Vengeance is by no means a weak tank, but while it is a solid tank overall, there are generally better options for either offensive, defensive, or utility roles depending on what your raid needs. When it comes to arenas, Havoc Demon Hunters is similar to Warrior in a way. Very high consistent damage, great mobility, and an easy to learn gameplay style that fits fantastically with a healer in 2v2 and even some comps in 3v3. In Mythic Plus, Vengeance tanks are currently one of only two tanks that have a cheat death passive, which is a fantastic get out of jail free card for a tank, and overall the class brings 5% increased damage buff to make your caster buddies happy. Havoc is a bit random when it comes to Mythic Plus throughout the expansions. Some points they're incredible, others they're really lackluster. It really is just going to be quite volatile in that aspect. Overall, the Demon Hunter is a super cool class that is incredibly mobile and easy to pick up, and always needed in a raiding environment. And lastly, we have the Evoker. The Evoker is a new class arriving in Dragonflight, and Drakthir Evokers begin at level 58 in their own starter zone, the Forbidden Reach. Evokers will have access to two specializations, Devastation and Preservation, while Devastation is a ranged DPS spec focused on using attacks with the explosive power of the Red Dragonflight. Preservation Evokers use the powers of the Green Dragonflight to nurture their allies and utilize the Bronze Dragonflight's time magic to rewind wounds done or heal your allies faster. The class overall looks incredibly fun and well thought out, but from testing it, it seems very highly skilled and difficult to use overall. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to bring this video to a close. All 13 classes in Dragonflight in a quick and concise guide that is super easy to understand. Once again, this is from our interpretation and isn't the final judgment and sentence of all these classes. I appreciate all the love and support, my name's Sky from the Comeback Kids, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace!